to this day nobody knows who wrote the Old Testament completely shrouded in in mystery the Jews believe that Musa wrote it of course the Orthodox Jews but no other group believes this because the Old Testament it mentions the death of Musa who buried Musa it mentions everything after Musa uh, people don't know who wrote it Allah is saying this is a Mubin book you know the origin you know the source everything is clear about it there's no question mark and I cannot stress for you Muslim, oh Muslims that we take this for granted we take it for granted as if it's something that is no big deal there is no other religious scripture on the face of this earth that is as unambiguous, as clear, as demarcated from Fatiha to Nas in the origin of language, exactly the same as the Quran. You look at the Hindu scriptures, you look at the Buddhist scriptures, you look at the Christian, you look at the Jewish scriptures, there is such a massive confusion. In many religions you don't even know what the scripture is. In almost all religions the language is not the language spoken by the prophets. The original New Testament was written in which language? Greek. Jesus Christ didn't speak Greek. He spoke Aramaic, right? And what I'm trying to stress to you, we take these things for granted. Our Quran, there's no versions. To this day, the Orthodox Christians have one Bible. The Protestants have another Bible. The Catholics have another Bible. Different books, completely. Different editions and subtractions. To this day, there are different versions. We, you can belong to any sect of Islam. This is amazing. You can differ in theology. There are other groups in Islam, but their Quran is exactly the same. From Fatiha to Nas, word for word, letter for letter, harakah for harakah, right? You purchase a Quran in India, you purchase it here, you purchase it in Timbuktu, you have handwritten manuscripts. Alhamdulillah, this is such a blessing from Allah that we just take for granted. That our holy book is clear. Tilka ayatul kitabin mubin. And all of this proves, as Allah says in the Quran, in a surah before this one, that we have revealed this scripture and we will protect it. Inna nahnu dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidun. Another also way to understand this uh, is Tilka Atuk Mubin. Allah is saying this surah in particular is something that is clear for you. You need nothing else besides this surah. So this is an indication of the importance of the surah. And to emphasize this point, Allah says, Inna, the third verse, Inna anz or so the second verse, Inna anzanahu Quranan Arabian la'alakum ta'qidun. Inna anzanahu. We have sent this Quran down. We have sent it down as an Arabic Qur'an so that you may understand. Inna anzana Qur'anan Arabiya la'allakum ta'qidun. A question that many Muslims ask, why does Allah refer to Himself in the plural? In fact, even many non-Muslims ask, why does, why does God refer to Himself in the plural in the Qur'an? What is the we? There are two primary uh, interpretations of this. The first of them is that the we is a royal plural, the plural of majesty. The plural of Izza. And this is something that is allowed in the Arabic language that a singular person, one man, will say we when he is worthy of it, meaning like king or royalty. And to this day, even in the English language, even in the English language, uh, the Queen of England, she never says I, she always says we. Even in the English language, the we here is the we of royalty. She doesn't mean we, meaning me and my family, she means I. But she says we to indicate that majesty. And in Arabic, this is also is called the royal plural. And so this is a, perm a permissible interpretation. Ibn Taymiyyah has another interpretation. Ibn Taymiyyah says that every time there is a plural in the Qur'an, this is a reference to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala along with the command of the angels. Allah tells the angels to do something. And that is why, and this is interesting, Ibn Taymiyyah says never in the Qur'an does Allah say, worship us. He always says, worship me. But Allah says, we reveal the book because the book comes down via Jibreel. Allah says, we send the rain because every single drop of rain has an angel taking it right to where Allah said it's going to go. Allah says, we are the ones who blow the winds because the angels are the ones who take the winds, right? Allah says, we are the ones who take the souls because the angel of death comes and takes the souls, right? So this is an interesting interpretation which also seems to make sense that when Allah says, we... He means, I am doing this and I'm telling the angels to execute this command. Because the Qur'an comes down at the command of Allah by the hands of Jibreel. I feel like Jibreel is the one who brings it down. So this is one interpretation as well and it has a good uh, basis to it. Anzalnahu. You all know what anzala means. Anzala means to 
descend. Nazala means to go down. Nazala means to descend. And this shows that the Quran physically came down. Physically. But we know that the Quran did not come down onto a mountain and the book was there. What does it mean? There are a number of meanings here. Firstly, that Jibreel came down with the recitation of the Quran. So, literally the Quran is coming down with Jibreel in his memory. And Jibreel is reciting it to the Prophet ﷺ. Secondly, we learn from a hadith in, uh, in Mustadrak al Hakim that on Laylatul Qadr, Allah Azza wa Jal physically sent down a divine copy of the Quran. Physic, a book, a part of the Loh al Mahfuz that had the Quran on it. You all know what Loh al Mahfuz is? Allah says in the Quran. But who kitab Quran Majidun Philohim Mahfuz, right? So there is a copy of the Quran in the Loh al Mahfuz. And according to one hadith which is authentic, on Laylatul Qadr, Allah says, Inna anzannahu fi Laylatul Qadr. And in one interpretation, this Loh al Mahfuz portion of the Quran was literally sent down to the lowest heavens. On Laylatul Qadr, before the Wahi began. Before the Wahi began upon the Prophet, ﷺ, Allah sent down this copy of the Quran to the lower heavens. And Jibreel ﷺ would take from there as well. So there is a physical descent of a divine copy of the Quran. And so Allah says, Anzala. And there's also a metaphysical descent, meaning within Jibreel. Jibreel brings the Quran down. And this also shows us of the many evidences that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above. Some people say Allah is everywhere, but it doesn't make sense. Allah is not everywhere. This not what Allah Azza wa Jal is above us, and that's why the Quran is coming down. If Allah was not above us, then the Quran would not need to come down. Nor would the Prophet have to go up in Isra wal Miraj to speak to him. So the Quran is coming down. Inna anzalnahu. We have sent down this Quran. Now sometimes Allah says we have anzala, and sometimes He says we have nazala. Anzala and Nazala. What's the difference between these? Minor difference, but it's also very profound and deep. Anzala means to send down at once. Nazala means to send down bit by bit. And the Quran is referenced with Anzala and with Nazala. The Quran, sometimes Allah says Anzala. And sometimes He says Nazalna. Nazala. What is the difference again? Anzala means it comes down. It comes down like this. Nazala means, I cannot break this up, but we break it up into bits. One bit, another bit, another bit, another bit. That's Nazala. Right? Now, the Quran is sometimes Anzal and sometimes Nazal. How is this? Because both occurred. The Quran came down in its entirety on Laylatul Qadr. This is Anzala. And then for the next 23 years, what happened? Jibreel brought it. 5, 10, 15, 20 ayat at a time. This is, what is this? Nazala. And so Allah Azza wa Jal speaks the exact truth and both of these things are valid. Inna anzalnahu Qur'anan Arabiya. We have revealed this as an Arabic Qur'an. Qur'anan Arabiya. Now this is a very, very interesting verse. There are 11 verses in the Qur'an, exactly 11 verses that characterize the Qur'an as being Arabic. Allah says in 11 verses that this is an Arabic Qur'an. We have revealed an Arabic Qur'an. This is in bilisan in Arabiyyin mubin. This is in clear Arabic language. And from this there is unanimous consensus amongst all the scholars of Islam that the Qur'an can only be in Arabic. Because of this, because of a verse just like this verse. Inna azana Qur'anan Arabiyya. So Allah describes the Qur'an as being an Arabic Qur'an. And what this means, when we read a translation, we are not reading the Qur'an. We all know this, but this is the evidence. What this means, when we stand up in salah, we cannot say, all praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds. If we do so, our salah is null and void. We have to say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. If we were to recite it in a non-Arabic language, that is not Qur'an. It is a translation. It is not the actual Qur'an. And what this shows us as well is that the Qur'an, the Qur'an is, um, 
what it shows us as well is that the Quran has been revealed in the language that Allah Azza wa Jal spoke it. Now this is a deep theological point, I don't want to go too deep here, but Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah believe something which other groups deny. Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they believe the Quran is the Kalamullah. You've all heard this, right? We call the Quran Kalamullah. Other groups, they deny this. Uh, other groups, they said, it's not Kalamullah. For Ahlul Sunnah, we believe the Quran is the Kalamullah. What does it mean, it's the Kalamullah? It means that, literally, Allah Azza wa Jal spoke the Quran. He recited the Quran. That's why we call it Kalamullah. And it means that Jibreel heard this recitation. And Jibreel brought this recitation down to the Prophet Sallallahu And the Prophet recited it after he heard it from Jibreel. And from Jibreel to the Prophet from the Prophet to the Sahaba, up until this day, we have a continuous chain. Non-stop. And it is from Allah Azza wa Jal the recitation begins. It's from Allah Azza wa Jal. And what this means when Allah says we have revealed an Arabic Quran, that that recitation was done in Arabic as well. Because that's why it is an Arabic Quran. And you know, getting into, forget the theology, when we recite the Quran, what we feel is something that is divine. Even if you're not Arab, when you recite the Quran, you feel something. This is an amazing speech. It is a, it's a divine speech. Why, where did this come from? Well, when you understand Sunni theology, you understand why, where this came from. We believe that this recitation, it was recited by Allah Azza wa Jal. And therefore, when we recite it, there is something of divinity. Not my recitation is not divine, astaghfirullah. But there's something divine about the Quran. And that is why the Qur'an, it must be respected. You cannot put it on the floor, show disrespect to it. You, it's, it's sunnah to respect the Qur'an. You should put it on a high place in the room. You should have wudu when you touch it, right? You're not, you're not allowed to touch the Qur'an without wudu. So many aspects of respect, why? Because the Qur'an is not just any book. The Qur'an is kalamullah. And when it is kalamullah, it has a certain status that no other book has. So Allah says, Inna anzalnahu Qur'anan Arabiya. We have revealed it in an Arabic Qur'an. Now, a question also arises here. Does this mean that all of the words in the Qur'an are Arabic? When Allah says this is an Arabic Qur'an, does this mean every single word in the Qur'an is Arabic? There are clearly words in the Qur'an that come from, uh, from Persian, from Greek, uh, from even Roman. There are clearly words in the Quran that are not words that are pure Arabic. Istabraq, abariq. These are Roman, Persian words. Sometimes there's even Sanskrit words. There's even words from Greek, from, sorry, from Latin. And those Latin words have also worked their way into English, by the way. It's an interesting point here. So there are some words that we, we are native speakers of English, right? Uh, and English, of course, is based in Latin. And Latin is a very ancient language. And some words from Latin made their way to the Arabs as well. Can anybody think of any word that is Quranic and English at the same time? There's more than one. That's a good attempt. Ard, he said Ard. It's a good attempt. Earth, Ard. Uh, it's a good... Sidr? Sugar. The Quran does not mention sugar. The Quran does not mention sugar. It's a good attempt, but the, it's not in the Qur'an. No, we're talking about English and Latin and, uh, and, and, and Qur'an. Uh, story. Story. Arabs. Asatir. Asatir. Right? Asatir. Asatir is not a pure Arabic word, it's a Latin word. Right? And the English word story is from the very Latin that made its way to the Arabs and we find in the Quran, these are asatir. These are the stories of old. When you read Yusuf on any translation, how do they translate asatir? Story. It's the same word. There's other words as well uh, that have slightly been changed. Uh, the word justice. What is the Arabic for justice? How is it the same, Sheikh? We're trying to find the same word. Another word for justice. Qistas. Qistas. Wazinu bil Qistas. Al Mustaqim. Right? It's a similar, it's from the same root. 
as a Latin root. So from English it entered and it became justice, from Arabic it became Qislas. And there are two or three other words like this, just as a side point, something for your benefit.